EA Sports brings you a special edition of the National Football League for this Halloween matchup. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints coming up next. You can almost hear the noise coming from the nearby French Quarter. And they're being just as loud inside Caesars Superdome here in New Orleans. So glad you all could join us for this game. Kate Scott and Brock Hewitt on the call for it. And we're expecting quite a bit of offensive gamesmanship, partner. Some veteran savvy out there. Both of our starting quarterbacks have spent quite a long time in this league. And they've got plenty of experience to show for it. Yeah, I like the way you say that right there. Gamesmanship and veteran savvy. Father mm. time, he chases down these skill guys. It's a, it's a game that's getting <laughs> younger and younger, right? Because, yeah, yeah. well, it's hard to be as fast as you've been when you were a rookie. But as a quarterback, you've got to use your years of experience. Both these guys have to play this game from the neck up and still play it at a high level. Here's the punter, Bradley Penny, and to get this one going. And we're underway in Caesar Superdome. Here comes Williams on the return. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. So the Saints offense taking over for the first time here. Leading them out in year 11. He's played 15 or more games every season in the league. A real Iron Man, Derek Carr. One thing you can always trust about Carr is to give you a lot of games and a whole lot of numbers as a starter each and every season. He's just got a lightning quick release. I love watching him throw a football, but he's not gotten a lot of chances at postseason moments. And time, well, time is not on his side. All right, let's get this show on the road. It is first and 10. Carr gonna open with a pass here. Catch made by Alvin Kamara. And he's got a decent gain before being brought down. I call this quarterback's best friend. Some call it a safety valve, some call it automatic, but it's sure nice as a quarterback when you got a trusty running back over the middle of the field that you can depend on. Second and six coming up here. Pistol snap to Carr. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop him. And that pushes him back. Third down coming up. And now this defense is on that sack board and sets up a pretty good chance here on third down. It's a little bit like blood in the water with sharks when it comes to taking sacks. You can feel it as a quarterback. Once that defense gets one, they're hungry for another. This offense looking to convert as they come up on third down. Working out of the gun. It's Carr. Complete beyond the marker. Oh, this big guy is moving! And he does quite a bit of damage before they finally take him down. Now, right there, that's what you want to see on your opening drive. Boom! Connect on a big shot, and instantly, you set a tone that you're not going to be afraid to be aggressive in this game today. Boy, do I love that. So a massive gain, and all of a sudden, we've got first and ten inside the red zone. From the red zone now. Completed to his running back. And they get this down to the seven-yard line. Now following that completion, we see a man shaking up. Officials calling for a pause as he gets looked at. This drive has been excellent. A few shots now. It's starting with six as they come up on it. First and goal. They'll run with Kamara. And they'll make this stop after a small push to the five. Give him a couple on the run, and it's now second and goal. Hey, I get it on first and goal, right? A lot of teams like to be conservative and, and limit risk. Even if a run is stopped short, you still got two, sometimes three downs to play with. Now movement as somebody goes early. And for the first time today, we're going to hear from our officials. 
There was a blitz coming, and that got somebody to panic and jump early. It cost him five yards. Second and goal now. Five yards more difficult following that penalty. From the shotgun, caught. The throw is caught. And he has it down to the eight-yard line on the play. Well, the odds aren't great when you throw into double coverage. Normally, you see one of the defenders make a play on the ball. Two men nearby, and that's a missed opportunity for the coverage to make an impact play. They've held him out twice. Here we go. Third and goal. Looking to throw. Carr. Touchdown, New Orleans. What an outstanding opening series, partner. They just wore down that defense as they marched their way to the end zone. Yeah, it took a whole bunch of that opening script to find a touchdown, but it showed just how well designed that script was. It was the right sequence of plays to keep that ball moving and find the end zone while getting your offense established in its top gear right here early on. Blake Groupie to try the extra point. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Saints will jump out to a 7-0 lead. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Here's Avery Williams on the return. Tackle made as the return gets it out to the 32. So out had the Falcons for their first possession. And leading them out in his 13th season out of Michigan State is Kirk Cousins. Well over a decade it started in this league, and Kirk Cousins put up some prolific numbers. The thing that's eluded him despite all the stats are those playoff opportunities and those marquee postseason victories. I think Kirk, his family, and everybody rooting for him hopes the final chapters of his career will contain some of those. It's a new set of downs for him at the 32. Cousins' first play is going to the air. That one's cut along the left sideline. And he's going to be brought down after reaching the 43. That goes as a gain of 25 yards and picks up the first. You know what I like about that, Kate? I like that they're not coming out slow. They're willing to go with some looks here that will yield big yardage down the field instead of just settling for dinking and dunking the ball. One play in, and this drive is already in enemy territory. They'll run it here with Bijan Robinson. And he's into the front for a gain of about two. You know, Kate, I like to call these body blows. Body blows. You've got to be committed to running the football. Even if it doesn't move the chains, I guarantee you that wear and tear will pay dividends later. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. Staying with Robinson. And once again, he doesn't manage much before getting brought down. A couple yards on the run. It's third and six now. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal game, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. Throwing on third, Cousins. He has the first over the middle. And he runs this to the 25 before being brought down. He picks up 15 on the play. And the Falcons will have a first. I'm not sure how this defense let that guy slip through him like that. On third down, nonetheless, he took that snap as an opportunity. And man, did he make an impact play. They kick the running back in motion. First and 10, here's Cousins. 
Called in left side. And he's tackled after gaining a handful. Well, that's a pretty similar result to a first down run play. Moves it forward, keeps you on schedule, and makes second and third down a whole lot easier to manage. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. Out of the gun, Cousins. This one's caught. And this is down all the way to the three. Give him about 16 yards on that gain, Brock, and it sets him up with first and goal. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. They've set themselves up well for an opening drive touchdown here. Brock gets first and goal. And the plunge up the gut yields nothing there. They don't pick up anything there, and now it's second and goal. So that's one quarter gone in a battle of NFC South rivals. Neither side separating much so far. Back to the Superdome of Caesar in just a bit. Welcome back. Time for our second quarter. The Falcons with a chance to score. Play action now for Cousins. Pocket isn't holding up. They're able to drop it. Good pressure from the defense there. Has them trending in the wrong direction. Kate, I've seen a, a one-step drop. I've seen a three, a five, a seven. Some of the boots and play actions get more depth. But a 20-step drop? <laughs> That's not going to cut it. Except for this defense, it just adds a whole bunch of negative yards to that play. Buckle up. It's third and goal. Throwing his cousins. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And it's dropped back down now to a four-point game. Well, that's the type of long, sustained drive that takes some of the starch out of your opponent. The only negative is that the kicking team was out there for a field goal and not an extra point. But they do come away with three. Got a good one here. They've cut the lead to four as they send it away. Here comes Williams on the return. Fought off a tackle, but he lost the football. And the fumble recovery is made. And they limit the damage on the return, but it is still a turnover. These guys are flying down the field. Reminds me of the guys at Braveheart. But different than Braveheart, these guys got two things on their mind. Number one, get the returner down. And number two, try to separate the ball if they can. It's rare that it happens, but boy, is it big when it does. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. They fake the handoff. Now Cousins. Pass is caught. That's Darnell Mooney. And they get this down to the 12-yard line before being stopped. It's a 13-yard play, and that's enough for the first. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route, too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him, only to drop your hips and cut right inside. Some good work to help reset those chains. First and 10, a run to Robinson. And this is down to the five-yard line before they can stop him. It's a solid seven-yard pickup on first down. Now they're going to have second and three. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense, I think, feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run in crossing that first down marker. And 
hit stops him cold. Well, he maybe got back to the line. Nothing gained or lost on that run, and now it's third and three. You want to see the term read and react with a little video in the football dictionary? That's it. All plays on the table here for third and three. Working from the gun, it's Cousins. Cut near the goal line. And this one stopped at the three-yard line. The rookie out of Alabama there on the tackle. Those kind of completions are so frustrating, Kate. <laughs> it's like a putt. You got it on line, you feel good about it, it's going in the hole. But you never want to leave it short. Offense staying out there, it's fourth and one. They'll run it with Robinson. And he pushes them a little closer to the three. So the run doesn't get the yardage. It's a turnover on downs. Well, a blitz on fourth down's a gutsy call, but it can work against a pass or a run. Good luck running for the sticks when you got a whole defense crashing you right off the snap. The Saints and Derek Carr about ready to get back to work. And so far, they've executed exactly how they drew it up, Brock. Early lead, no points allowed, and a chance now to seize control of the game on their second possession. And, Kate, generally, offenses love to script their first 10 to 15 plays. Well, this entire game script is playing out just the way they want to. And the drive will start out with a first and 10. Here's Carr. Stays in, and the pressure gets home. He doesn't throw it in time. That's a safety. Some early down aggressiveness in the shadow of their own end zone there, Brock. And unfortunately, it costs them. They're going to have to punt it away following the safety. Well, you know me. I, I don't ever mind aggressiveness. I think it empowers your quarterback, empowers that offensive huddle. But you also got to know, as a quarterback, if you call a pass play, you got to do your job. And doing your job means avoiding a safety in that circumstance. After surrendering the safety, they're out to boot it away. Secures this at the 17. And this one's brought to a halt at about the 36-yard line. Onto the field runs the Atlanta offense. They took their shot on fourth and goal. Came away empty-handed, so a lot to like, Brock, but just need to find a way to punch it in this time. The Falcons in good field position here as they start out first and ten. Drive begins with a run. It's Robinson. And the push forward doesn't get beyond the line. That play wrapped up by Demario Davis. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and ten. These linebackers of today, they are so quick. They're so twitchy. You don't get a body on them in a hurry, they're going to stick you right at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten, need to get some positive yardage here. Shotgun snap now to Cousins. Finds him over the middle. And he's tackled after getting this to the opposing 46. They get 18 yards out of it and a new set of downs. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Do that. Turn a short little gain, a short little pass into some yards after catch, and that quarterback will find you again. New set of downs for him from the 46. First down throw for Cousins. It's into the hands of Mooney. And he's brought down after pushing to that 35-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup, and it gives them the first down. <laughs> that is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. Robinson on the inside give. And his charge towards the line. That's right around three yards. So we're at the two-minute warning here from the Superdome. It's the Falcons with a second and seven. From the 32. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. 
That pass, it did put him in a position where he had to shake a defender. That's all you want. Give me a one-on-one. -on -one. And he is capable of doing it, but not against that dude. Uh-uh, that defender could not be shook. And he knocked him back across the line. Third and long, it's Cousins. That's incomplete left side. Trying to find his tight end. So that brings up fourth and long. So many coaches love third downs, and they practice them so much, Kate. Why? Because they're the money down in the NFL. Whether it's a close game or already out of hand, coaches know got to execute and convert on these third downs. And this kick is good. He needed to get all of it there, and he did. And that's going to give them the lead. Okay, one of the areas that kickers and quarterbacks are similar, they want to get into rhythm. And no better way to feel good and get into that rhythm and start a game two for two as a kicker. Now to kick it away, here's Pinion. Jackson now to return it. This return makes it up to the 25. Well, we've already seen some nice plays here, and we're going to see plenty more before this game ends. But you might be thinking, with plays like that, my guy's ratings should be better. Well, you're not alone. you got a chance to let the Madden ratings hotline know just what you're thinking. Give them a call, 1-844-MADDEN-1, and make your case for who should get a boost. They're out and set, first and ten. Car here from the gun. That one doesn't find its man incomplete. Not on the same page with his tight end. And that'll bring up second down. Hey, I know nobody's perfect, and all you have to do is listen to me and how many words I screw up. <laughs> but you certainly expect those throws of that length to be 100%. They've got to be borderline automatic in this offense. Second and 10, here's Carr. Hits his running back. And he'll get it out to the 34 before he's tracked down. The Saints calling for a timeout. So they're first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. Third and a lone yard coming up. Working out of the gun. It's Carr. Complete beyond the marker. And he's going to get this up to the 45 before he's brought down. We have a timeout here. Second one taken by New Orleans. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. Ball on the 45, first and 10. Throwing again, it's Carr. Completed over the middle. And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. And with third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. Now the Saints hustling people forward. They need to get set. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. Well-timed strike by that defender to knock it free. So it's going to be third and short coming up. As a defense, you got to see the pass. you got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on to that one through a well-placed hit. Here he is to throw on third and two. Has him on the quick hitter. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. Offense up to the line fast. Throwing on first down. It's Carr. Hits him on the in route. And he's taken down at the 30. Just before halftime, we get a timeout Take it.
Only time left for one more snap, Brock, so they're going to run out their field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 47-yarder. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that's halftime here in this Halloween contest. Now we'll head over to Orlando, Florida. Check in with Jonathan Coachman for the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Kate, sit tight. We'll get back to you and Brock in just a moment. But for now, this is our Halftime Report. For the Saints, this is why they signed him. They got a strong performance from their quarterback, Derek Carr. He has a touchdown pass, and that amounted to the only touchdown of the game for either team thus far. As always, a hat tip to Coach for his hard work during the break as we're happy to welcome you all back for the start of our third quarter. On is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. On the return, here's Ray Ray McLeod. He stopped on the return at the 27. Out comes the Atlanta offense for the debut possession of the second half. And their defense sure has kept this game close. Now it's time for them to come through, get some points for their team in this low-scoring affair. Offense ready to begin this drive, first and ten. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. We'll get this complete to Pitts. And that's good for a gain of five. Brought down by Paul Adebo. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target, thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bowling ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you've got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. Here's second and five. Short pass brought in. And he'll get it up to the 44. Give him 13 on that play. And it's good for an Atlanta first down. I'm sure coach and play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. First and 10, here's Cousins. He lobs it up, looking deep to the right side. And yeah, that's going to be knocked away incomplete. Trying to force one through there. So second down coming up. Boy, take a look at that. Look at him locking down his area of the end zone. They can bring it in close enough to take shots, but there are no easy touchdowns. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Now Cousins again. He's trying to go deep again. And the defender redirects that deep shot. Nicely done. Incomplete. Well, no look on his first look of the game. So they're left facing third and long. How many times do defenders hear from their coaches, read and react, read and react? you got to read where the quarterback's eyes are going. And more importantly, you got to react as he begins to throw and knock that ball away. Throwing on third. Cousins. Into the hands of Pitts. And he's going to go down right along the midfield strike. Feet and eyes, Kate. Feet and eyes. They so often tell the story of every position on the field. When that quarterback's feet and eyes move to his secondary read, and so often it's a tight end, well, it's incumbent on that defense to fly to the ball. You want to make that tackle force the fourth down? It took a great defensive effort to do it. Punt team is on now, and they get this away. So this one sails over the sideline, and they'll spot it where a touchback would go at the 20-yard line. The New Orleans offense set to go now. And it has been all about these defenses so far, Brock. Even into the second half, we're still waiting for one of these offenses to take charge. Yeah, what you're feeling, these defenses are making every yard tough, every first down tough, every series tough. And offensively, yeah, it's time to toughen up and maybe more importantly, sharpen up. Drive starts out with a first and ten. They go play action with Kahn. Connects with the open man downfield. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big gain and a new set of downs. That goes as a gain of 25 yards and picks up the first. 
I think my favorite part was the magic he worked after the catch. The way he took the completion and made so much more out of it by adding all the extra yardage. Just one play into this drive, and they're already sitting on their own 45. Putting the tight end in motion. Kamara now on first and 10. He's forward, gets a couple of yards. Jesse Bates getting up for the stop that time. He gets a couple on first, and they'll come up second and eight. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet, but if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, It'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. From the 48. That's complete to Wilson. And they catch up to him, but not until he's got a huge gain and a first down. It's a 26-yard pickup there. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains. There wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. Carr now on first and ten. Means on the catch. And they get this down to the 12-yard line before being stopped. Big gain, 14 on the play. And the Saints are going to have a first down. Well, that is pretty darn impeccable timing between the two. They hit a curl route of that length. It takes great anticipation and precision by the quarterback and the receiver on the other end, finishing it, doing his job. Kamara running out of the gun. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Another run for Kamara. And they'll stop him after a short gain to the 13. Looks like a pickup of two, and now they've got third and ten. They'll motion him out of the backfield left. Carr throwing on third. Ooh, put way too much on that one, Brock. Over the end zone and out. Just something off in the rhythm of their passing game on that one, Kate. Time to recalibrate and keep throwing it to get back on track. On fourth down, out comes the Saints field goal team and Blake Groupie. Already has one in this game. This from 30. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that throws the lead to five. Inspiring a bunch of confidence in himself right there, Kate. Second time they brought him out for a field goal, and second time well, he's knocked it right through. Trust is earned in a number of different ways on a field, but that's the best way to gain it as a kicker. is the Saints kickoff team to tee it up and send it away. Here comes Williams on the return. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. Now here come the Falcons on offense. Well, their last drive, not the one they want to replicate after they were forced to punt it away. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Working from the gun, it's Cousins. Pitts brings it in. And he crosses the sideline a yard or two beyond, it looks like, the 30. I know I could sound like a broken record when I talk about timing. Dennis Allen has the red challenge flag in hand. He wants to take another look. 
Well, we're going to see how much of a sideline maven he is, Brock. This one very close, whether he got the feet down or not. And I'm so impressed by all these mavens because you've got to make that <laughs> transition from college where one foot, you're good. Yep. yep. But not at this level. You've got to be a ballerina. You've got to get those toes both in, and the replay booth will be the judge of it. Second and three now. Out of the gun, Cousins. And he doesn't see a window he likes, so he just got rid of that one. And then brings up third down. Throwing his cousins. And he'll go down, and we'll say right at the 39-yard line. He gets six on that play, and the Falcons will have a first. You know, they call that the money down for a reason, because you're just simply not going to last long in the NFL if you don't convert a good portion of your third downs. It's the money down. And nice to see them roll the dice and continue the series. They send the tight end in motion. On first and ten, it's Cousins. Completes, it's Bijan Robinson. They gain 14 on the play. And it's good for an Atlanta first down. At that down and distance, this group was pretty confident the screen would get them enough yards for the first, and it did. And so long as it keeps working like that, I bet you it'll be a go-to play for them when they need it the next time. First and 10, ball set up at the 48. So we're through three here. It's Falcons football, a nice little help for them as they trail entering the quarter. First and 10, ball set up at the 48. Shotgun snap now to Cousins. He completes it in traffic. And they get there to take him down right around the 41. You know, with some of these tight ends today, you could put two guys, heck, put three guys on them, and they still find a way to make those catches. With how they move at their size, they really are the ultimate matchup advantage. From the 41. Turnover, it's going to stay with the offense. Almost the impact play this defense was searching for, but they could only get half the job done, partner. Fumble forced, but they couldn't recover. I'll tell you what else it forces, though. That coordinator, that play caller on the other side, now got a little bit of doubt about his ball handlers. Got to have better ball security than that. Here he is on third and long. Searches from the pocket. Able to hit Robinson, complete. And he's down. Looks like they made the stop at the 46-yard line. Translatable skills. That's what you call it. So effective as a runner, but those same traits that make him a great runner, adept at getting those yards, well, he translates it now as a receiver in the open field. The Falcons getting ready for the punt. The Saints ready to return their offense to the field. And the last drive did end in points. Not as many as they wanted, though. They had to settle for that field goal despite advancing the football pretty well. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. They send a tight end in motion. Here's Williams to start the drive. And this one does not go far. Only two yards, and it brings up second and eight.
Running back sent in motion. From the 22 on second down. On the slay it complete to Johnson. And they're going to bring him down just beyond the 30 at the 31. It's a pickup of nine yards. And that's good for a New Orleans first down. They run it from the gun with Kamara. In the middle holds. They don't get anything on the run. No game there that time, and it's second and ten. As that linebacker makes that tackle right in the middle of the field, all I'm thinking about right now, Kate's training camp. Because <laughs> that's the middle drill right there. That is textbook. What you do in training camp, coming to life when it matters. Car off the play fake. This one is hit by a defender and winds up incomplete. That one vehemently swatted away. So now it's going to be third and long. Any DB prefers a highlight real interception and just forcing an incomplete pass. But as soon as he realized a pick wasn't possible on the play, well, he gets his hands on it and made sure it wasn't completed. Motioning left is Olave. He'll throw it. Complete beyond the marker. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. New set of downs for him from the 46. They send him left out of the slot. Running behind center with Camara. And he gets taken down immediately right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on that run, and they face second and ten. You know, Kate, over the years, I've heard running backs say, there's just times you got to run in the darkness. And when linebackers fill that hole like that right in the middle of the field, he ran right into the darkness and the pain of that linebacker. Second and ten now. Too much lead on that throw. That falls incomplete ahead of his target. I think if you look up in phase in the defensive encyclopedia, that is a picture-perfect form of it. He was all over him in coverage, really forcing the incompletion. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. He's back to throw. That's into the hands of Moreau. And he's officially into enemy territory now. They're going to give him the opposing 49. So that brings us to the two-minute warning in New Orleans. Saints with a five-point lead. Here comes the Saints punting unit. And he's got a good chance to really stick him deep his first time out. And a fair catch made here at the 17. That punt goes unanswered. No return there. And the Falcons will have plenty of work to do on their next drive. They're out and set. First and ten. To throw. Nice work by the back here. Playing safety valve. Complete. And he gets it up close to the 25 before he's out of bounds. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable and then creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Here he is to throw. He'll get this complete to Pitts. And he'll take it up to the 30 before being brought down.
They'll keep this drive moving and come to the line for first and ten. Now to throw. Dump off caught by his back. And he'll get taken down after advancing this to the 37. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable and creates space to take that shot downfield. Now the Falcons trying to get everyone up and set here. Looking to throw it. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Timeout called by Atlanta. That's going to be at second. And they can take a moment to try to build more momentum after getting the first. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. Throwing now. Has him on the quick hitter. And he's out of bounds after getting this one to the opposing 45-yard line. Kid, I promise you, if you and I got to travel the country and watch young quarterbacks, even really good high school quarterbacks, out routes are the hardest to complete. Slants, goes, fades, all that stuff comes somewhat naturally. But really trusting yourself to throw that out route, that comes with time and experience. Finds a seam down the middle. And he's going to be taken down a yard shy of the 25. It goes as a gain of 19 yards. And the Falcons will have a first. You know, it sure seems like he knew exactly where he was going with that before the snap. That's a pre-snap decision that led to a post-snap first down. Setting up to pass. It's incomplete. Risky throw to the sideline. They're lucky that defender didn't keep on going down the sideline there. It's going to be second down. Oh, that was such an opportunity lost. They were looking for a way out without giving up any points on the series. And instead, well, he just couldn't quite hang on. Back to throw. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Timing is everything in life, and timing is everything defensively. That throw was just a little bit late and gave the defense time to close, deliver a pop, and knock that ball loose. No connection on the last play, and now it's third down. They motion the tight end over. Here he is to throw. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. You know, it's a point of emphasis in practice each and every week, no matter where we go. How are we going to attack the coverage on third down? And it shows the wrong play off that call sheet that time. Here he goes. Got to have this on fourth down. And it's going to be incomplete. Couldn't connect to extend the drive. So the defense rises to the challenge and gives the ball back to their offense. Hey, I am all for aggression. You get four downs, go for it. But I do have to wonder here, Kate, after being denied once again, is there going to be a trust level on that sidelines to go for it the next time they get this shot? Into the victory formation they go, Brock, here on first down. Your favorite formation, right, Brock? The victory formation here as he takes a knee. The defense takes its third and final timeout. That's all they had, so the offense free to start running the clock down now. A kneel down here, and they can start to celebrate this win. With the win in hand, they'll take the knee and let this clock run out. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot, and now you can enjoy the victory. So fans starting to stream from the Superdome to the French Quarter as it's a win for the Saints. This was a game they had circled a long time ago, Brock. You bring a division rival into your building, 
You want to make a statement at their expense and get that W. We know it's not just an axiom, right, that it's so hard to win any game in the NFL. It is. They're difficult to do. But a division rival in your own building, it almost feels like a must win. And that's the juice they played with today. And with Brock Heward and our EA Sports crew, I'm Kate Scott saying so long from this one. It's a win for the Saints as we say so long from New Orleans.